Hi, my name is Erica Gamet, and welcome back. In this week's video, we're going to jump back into the world of grip in InDesign. And we're going to start with a search that I like to call find this or that. So you might be finding, looking for a word or a phrase or this other word or phrase. And we're also not limited to just two items. We might be looking for this word or this word or this word. It's a little easier to illustrate once we're in InDesign, so let's jump on over and check it out. Sometimes when doing a grep search, you're looking for one of a possible several different phrases or words that you need to find. For instance, in this first example, we might be looking for the word red or blue or green, and this is when the find this or that search comes in handy. So in this example here, when I find a color, I would like to apply the character style emphasis to that particular um, piece of text that it finds. And in this case, it's just slightly larger text and it's uh, bold. So what we want to do is we need to be able to tell it this or this or this. And in that phrase, the or is represented by the vertical pipe or the straight up line. It sits above the backslash on the keyboard. So I need to tell it the different items I'm looking for. So I can't just say look for any color. That would be great. There are some searches that you can do that say look for any punctuation, things like that, things that it knows how to classify. But in this case, we have to actually define what the colors are that we're looking for. So I'm going to open up the Find Change dialog box, Command or Control F, and go into the Grep tab. And I'm going to tell it find what? Well, I know that the colors that are listed in my document are red and blue and green. Now, if I were using 100 colors, I would have to list all of them. So it's a little time consuming, but you can see where if you had the, these colors listed several times throughout your document, this will actually make quick work of that. So I need to find red. So I'm just going to type in red and capitalization counts. So keep that in mind because we're going to have to do a couple workarounds if we don't know if something is capitalized or not. But in this case, I know all the colors are lowercase. So we're going to stick with that. Keep it simple. Red. Then I'm going to do shift and then backslash, which gets me that pipe character. And just zoom in so you can see that. So red and then I'll type in blue and then green. All right, so I'm looking for red or blue or green. And when I find any of those words, I'm going to come down here and change the format to the character style emphasis. I'll zoom out of that. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this uh, text frame that's here, this story, and choose just search by story. So when I do that, I'm saying every time I find the word red, blue, or green, change it to the character style emphasis. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit uh, change all. Three replacements were made, and it went ahead and changed that for me. So again, I'm just telling it this or this or this. Now, keep in mind, everything that is to the left or the right of that pipe must be there. So you want to make sure that you define the words that you're looking for very specifically to what actually fits the text that's in your document. I'm going to say done and jump out of there. But if you need to include more items that are there, or there's something that's common to everything, you can either type it each time or you can section it off. And let me show you what I mean. So in this case, I have this text and what I want to do is I want to find any time my brand Acme and one of our products appears, I would like a trademark symbol to appear after that. So I could type in Acme Anvils, and then the pipe, Acme Dynamite, and the pipe, Acme Rocket Skis, and the pipe. I want to make sure that when something like this occurs, Rocket Skis without Acme, it does not fit the pattern and therefore does not get the trademark symbol. So I could type in, like I say, Acme every time, or I could type it once and then sort of section off the rest of it. Let me show you what I mean by that. So to find change, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that's here, clear everything out. And I'm going to type in Acme because I know that's common to the entire search that I'm doing. And then I'm going to put all the this or this or this text inside parentheses to kind of coordinate off. So I'm going to put an opening parenthesis, and I'm going to type in anvils and the pipe and dynamite and the pipe 
and then rocket skis. Now, even though that's a, two separate words, it's taking everything to the right of that pipe. So I'm gonna say rocket skis. So now what I can do very quickly is just say find next, find next, and make sure it fits everything, and that's it. I wanna make sure it did not find this rocket skis down here. You notice it did not find Acme rocket skis in this last section, this last sentence, because rocket skis is not capitalized. And I'll show you how to fix that also in a second. But let's come back up here to what we want to change this to. And I want to change it to the found text. So everything that fits that pattern, which we just saw were those first three lines of type. So I do dollar sign zero. If you can't remember that, come over to the little secret menu, go down to the bat bottom to found, and then found text means everything that fits that. All right, so we would use that, which gives us the uh, dollar sign zero. And then after that, I would also like to add a trademark symbol. And for that, I'm gonna go into my secret menu, choose symbols, down to trademark symbol. And so the tilde D is the, um, the meta uh, character data, for I'm sorry, the meta character information for um, a trademark symbol. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna say change all, and it changed it in those three places and put a trademark symbol after that. So again, we were able to section that off and um, have it find just the product names and add the trademark to that. Now I said we can find the Acme Rocket Skis down here even though they're not capitalized. So if I wanted to look for if it is capitalized or if it is not capitalized, I can also do that in one search. I could do it in a separate search if I wanted to, but I want to do it all in one. So I'm actually gonna hit Command Z or Control Z and undo that so we get back to the original text that we had. And I'm gonna come over here to Rocket Skis because, and I could do this for each of the items that are here. So in this case, I'm going to also make another subsection inside this subsection. I'm gonna say either capital R or a lowercase r. All right, so I'm gonna put a parentheses, do a capital R, followed by the pipe, followed by the lowercase r, and close that off. So it's looking for rocket capitalized or rocket not capitalized. And I need to do the same thing over here for skis. So I'm gonna do open parenthesis, capital S, the pipe, lowercase s, and a right hand parenthesis. And make sure we have the right hand parenthesis at the end there, we do. So now I can say change all, and it changed, whoops, let's not do that, let's undo that. It was choosing the selection. Once you've made a selection, it automatically reverts to selection. I wanted to find this entire story, change all, we should see it four times. And I went ahead and added the trademark on the top three lines and also down here, down below. And it still did not touch this because it didn't fit the pattern. It didn't start with the word Acme and then an either or. One of the other places you might use either or is for when you're looking for alternate spellings. So let's say we had a document and the word gray was spelled with an E and with an A. Now we might wanna um, put those two together, you know, and actually make it consistent. However, what if we had different, um, we had like I say a, a manual, an instruction manual, and one was geared with UK English and one was geared with US English, and we want both of those in there. Well, if I have the word gray, and I have the word gray spelled two different ways here. Let's make it a little bigger so we can see it. If I had both of those and I wanna find both instances of those and maybe change it to gray color, we can do that as well. So I'm gonna come back over here to the find change dialog box and delete everything that's in here. And I can say find what? Now I could type in gray and gray and that works great. But when it comes to grep, you wanna to try to have a more concise representation of the search if you can. So in this case, I, won't, I don't wanna duplicate everything that's similar to both of those words. So all I wanna do is make an either or for the E and the A. So I'm gonna come back and delete this and I'm gonna type GR because that's common to both of those. And then I'm gonna make a little subgroup and I'm gonna say either E or an A. And then Y is common to those. So when I do that and I say, let's find it in this story, I can say find next, find next. So it found both versions of those because it's saying either with an E or with an A. So again, it's just allows us to find things that um, fit the same pattern, but don't necessarily exist in every instance of it. And the last thing I wanna say about the either or is that you wanna make sure that when you're working with terms and you have terms that 
um, might have common elements, you want to make sure the longer one goes first. And let me explain that. So for instance, if I am looking for any time my character's name in this novel appears, her name is Samantha, but she also goes by Sam. So every time her name appears, maybe I want it to be in a specific character style or underlined or whatever it is I want, want to have happen. Or maybe it's a, you know, I have, make it be a hyperlink or something. Um, but every time her name appears, I want to uh, have that uh, highlighted. If I put in Sam, well, actually let's capitalize that because I know it's always going to be capitalized. It's a name. And then I put Samantha. If I do find on this story, I say find next, it can't even find a, a match. Why can it find it? Because I don't have one selected. Let's do that. If I choose that story and I say find next and then find next, you notice it found Sam, but it only didn't find the whole word Samantha. It found Sam. So if you put the short one first, it says, okay, I found Sam, um, but it didn't select the whole word. It just found that section of her name, Sam. And then it moves on to the next search. So it goes on to a whole new word now. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the longer one first. So that's something you need to be, like if you were looking for the words cat and category, you need to make sure that you put category first. Let's try that again, select that text say find next, now it finds the entire word, moves on to the next search, and it also finds Sam. So you wanna make sure that the, the order is important if you have common elements. Otherwise, put everything that you're looking for on either side of that pipe, and again, everything that is to the left or the right of that pipe is included in the search. And if you don't want it to be, if it's part of the pattern, and it may or may not be there, it needs to be segmented in some way. So we need to make sure that we put it inside parentheses to kind of uh, isolate the either or terms that we're looking for when we do our grep search. And that was the find this or that search, or at least that's what I like to call it. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope it made sense to you where you can find terms that may or may not exist in your, uh, in your text as you're looking for that in or using grep in InDesign. If it was helpful to you, please be sure and give it a thumbs up so I know that you like this kind of content. Also, leave me a comment in the comment section below what you liked about it, maybe what you'd like to see in future videos. I wanna hear from you what you guys wanna see in the, in the upcoming videos. Um, you can leave a comment here, like I said. You could also reach out to me on social media. I have all my links off to the side over here. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I put up new content. I do put out new videos every Wednesday, so I hope to see you here next time. And until then, bye-bye.